All right, guys, so we're going to get started here. So welcome back. Um, so today we're going to go over Git and GitHub. Um, by the way, we're not going to take any attendance today, but um, starting next week, we will take attendance. So yeah, just a quick announcement. Please join our Ed discussion if you haven't already. Uh, we make important announcements on there. So you know, scan the QR code. And so like later on, when we actually have assignments, you can ask those questions on there, and we'll be prompt about answering them on the forum. Does the link work, by the way? Or? Yeah, it's working. Right, Are perfect. we going to submit our assignments? Because we're like teaching them right now. Yeah, um, so yeah. Um, you will submit a submission text file onto CMS, and then we will use that to grade. All right, does anyone else still need this? Um, I'll probably, uh, I think the course website has a link to it, so y'all can just join from there. Um, yeah, so more quick announcements. Next Monday, we won't have lecture because it's fall break, but Wednesday, though, we will have lecture, so please come to that. It will be our first ever iOS-related lecture, um, so you'll learn a lot. Fill out the course roster if you haven't already. So it's going to be a Google form. I put that in the Ed discussion post as well as on the course website. So fill that out. We need it to add y'all to CMS as well as the GitHub. And then, yeah, check the pin Ed discussion. It has like a bunch of tasks that y'all need to do. And so there has been an issue with the Xcode version right now on the App Store. So if you have an older <laughs> version of Mac, you won't be able to install the newest Xcode version, which is Xcode 15. So to go around that, there is, I, um, I'll, I can show it right now, but on Ed discussion, um, I made a post. So there's a link right here, which you can find the, I guess, official release version. So for example, if you have the, the newest version is Sonoma, I believe. But if you have like an older version, like you know, like Monterey or like Ventura, then you will have to install like an older version. Um, so you can just install it there. We, I believe Xcode 14 should still work for our course. Um, even Xcode 13 may work. But if y'all have any questions about you know installing Xcode, then just make an announcement on or a post on that discussion. And also, I wouldn't immediately update to Sonoma if you sort of have a course that requires you to code as well. Because 1110, I believe, if you're taking yeah. 1110 right now. I believe the thing is you're not supposed to update while you are taking the course right now because sort of things work differently with the extensions. So I wouldn't update your computer. I would just download an older version of Xcode. Yeah. Okay, are there any other questions about installing Xcode? No? Okay. Um, yeah, so just to recap last lecture, lecture zero, so there are a total of 10 lectures for Swift related um, or iOS related. Again, attendance is graded. And there are a total of four assignments. So A3 and A4 will have a midpoint submission where we will check to see if um, you, know, you, are, you guys are on, on progress. Um, the last three assignments, A2, A3, and A4, you can pair up with at most one person. So you, know, you can look at the people around you or you know find someone else some find someone in the course but we will do like a partner matching form if you don't like have a partner um yeah any any questions yeah i'll, I'll make an announcement on a discussion so don't worry about stuff like that all right so um so, okay. yeah let's, jump, let's jump right into the lecture for today so last week we sort of mentioned that we'd be teaching skills that aren't just related to iOS development, but also that'll just help you later on with any software development. So Git is one of those programs that actually, you know, regardless of what you'll be doing with programming later on, you will be using Git. It is one of the tools that you use as a developer and it's really helpful. So I guess we'll start with like, what is Git? So we'll start off with a quote from our favorite source, ChatGPT. <laughs> So Git is a distributed version control system commonly used for tracking changes in source code during software development. So I guess to sort of break that down a little bit, so version control, meaning you can keep track of your changes in your code that, um, and you can revert back if you, if you need. So meaning you have different essentially versions of your code that sort of you can either push back to your main code, source code, that would be your repository, 
Or you can revert back if needed. If you say like make a mistake and you accidentally push it, and you can revert back to that version. So it really helps when you have sort of issues with your code that you don't want sort of being added to the source code. So and also mentioning distributed, meaning that multiple developers can work on the same code locally, which allows for offline work. So you guys, people who've taken 11.10 or are currently taking 11.10 right now, one of the major issues with collaborating is like, oh, if you want someone to code with you, you have to send them the zip file or you have to like look behind their shoulder to code. So Git actually solves that by allowing you to collaborate separately on different local devices, but you share the same source code repository on GitHub. So that's what, why uh, Git is such a powerful tool. It allows you to collaborate without sort of looking behind someone else's shoulder or even sending them the zip files of the code through email. So I guess we can sort of, uh, before we start into anything else, we can review some basic Git terminology. So as I mentioned earlier, a repository or a repo contains all of your project files and <coughs> each version of your file's version history. So if you want to um, sort of get an older version of your code, let's say you found a new bug and you don't want to sort of go back and delete it, you can go back on the repository and select an older version of your files so you don't have to go back and delete it manually. So that's what your repository is. That is your source code that you're pulling from and using and then you're editing on your local branch and then you're pushing it back to the repository for the source code. And uh, I guess briefly mentioned before, branch is a version of the repository that diverges from the main source code that you have, um, which is your repository. So every time you want to make a change and push it to the source code, you need to make a branch, which is something that we'll not really cover in this scope of this course. It's more so just, um, something that you'll probably be doing later on if you use Git in the future. And yeah, for this lecture, we'll only, only be focusing on the master branch, which is essentially the branch that allows you to push directly to your source code. So I guess here's like a visual representation of what I guess essentially Git does. So the blue branch right here is your main source code branch. It's your main repository. And let's say you want to add like a small feature. So you would branch off your code and that would be on your local repository on your actual computer. And on Xcode or VS Code or whatever, you would make the changes and you would push it back to the main branch and that would be right here. So at that point, you would merge your changes onto the main branch again and you would sort of update the source code with the branch code that you added on your local device. And that could be done later on multiple times, it could be done with multiple people, so that's why Git is such a powerful tool. It allows the sort of this branching so that you can merge any sort of local repositories and like deal with any issues that come up without sort of having to go back line by line and address each issue that's different from what you want in your source code. Yeah, so just a quick survey. Can I get a show of hands if you've heard of Git before, before this lecture? Okay, now keep your hand up. So keep your hand up if you've used it before. So only, yeah, so about, I guess like half of, half of y'all? Okay, yeah, so like, I guess like, Thing about the courses at Cornell, you start using Git in 3110, um, which is something I don't really, I don't know. I have a lot of friends that are taking 3110 right now, and they, you know, they get confused whenever they have to do Git and GitHub. So it's really good that y'all are learning right now, and it's really important. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and distinguish between Git versus GitHub, which are completely two different things. So Git is a software. So, you know, everything that Richie mentioned before, that is what Git is. GitHub is a service that manages the Git repositories. So if you go on a GitHub, inside of the um, GitHub website, you'll have a bunch of repositories. So it's a service in which you can, I guess, use Git. But keep in mind that you don't really need GitHub in order to use Git. There are other services out there. Um, I don't know any in particular, but because um, that's because GitHub is like the most popular one. So you can think of Git as like the language and the grammar used for writing a book, right? So Git is the, I guess the found, um, the raw materials for this book, but then you have a library, which is GitHub, that allows you to store and share those books. Are there any questions about Git versus GitHub? All right. So in this course, we won't use the actual GitHub. The, we will be using GitHub Enterprise, which is completely different. So keep in mind that the, I guess, domain for the Enterprise GitHub is separate from the actual GitHub. So it will be github.enterprise.com. 
coecis.cornell.edu, not github.com. So if you look at your you know, address bar, if it says .cornell.edu, then you're good to go. If it says github.com, then you're not in our enterprise GitHub. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so for the assignments, we will create the repositories for you, so you don't have to worry about creating the repositories. And if you do have a partner for A2, A3, and A4, then we will pair y'all up. Um, so the thing about using GitHub, I guess for this course, is that there might be times when you have merge conflicts if you're working separately. And so we do encourage y'all to pair program. In other words, like both of y'all will be working on one computer. And so um, that way, you know, if Richie, you know, we're gonna demo it later, but if Richie pushes a change on the branch and I forget to pull and I try to push my chains, then you get this thing called a merge conflict. And I guess for the scope of this course, we don't really wanna have to deal with that, even though it's important that you know how to deal with that. But you know, just for now, um, we're still gonna be using GitHub and pairing y'all. That way, you know, if one of y'all are sick, then we can, um, you guys can still work without having to, you know, send each other the zip files. Um, so yeah, so there isn't really a, I guess, demo code that y'all have to download. We're just gonna be, I guess, demoing on our screen about how to use Git. So um, remember, what well, can y'all see? I'm gonna zoom in really quick. Okay. So this github.com is wrong, right? Remember, it's github with this cornell.edu. And I would bookmark that one because if every time you look up GitHub, GitHub Enterprise is never the first thing that shows up. And if you, if you even navigate the GitHub website, it's like really, really difficult to find the GitHub Enterprise. So I would just remember the link or like save it to your bookmark so that you have that. Right, can y'all see back there? All right, perfect. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a repository. Again, you don't have to do this on the assignment. So I'm going to create a new repository and I'll put it under my net ID. And then for now, I'm just going to call it, like, I guess, git tutorial. Um, I'm going to make it public. That way, Richie can clone it. And then I'm going to add a readme file, just because. Just um, and then I'm going to create the repository. So now, this is what the repos repository looks like on GitHub. And so now, to clone the repository, so for the assignments, what you're going to do is look for I'll have in the assignment handout, like, a, I guess, SSH URL that y'all can clone. Um, but for now, if you click on the code here, under SSH, there should be this thing right here. Remember, we want to use SSH, not HTTPS. All right? So you can copy it by clicking this copy right here. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my desktop. And so to open up your terminal, um, if you're familiar with, if you've taken CS 1110, then you can do a command space to quickly type in terminal, click enter. So this is my terminal, right? Um, make it bigger. Okay, so whenever I open terminal, the, I guess, directory that it opens by default is your home directory. So this is my home directory. And so if I type ls, that basically lists out all of the folders that you have inside that directory. So for example, when I took CS1110, I have a CS1110 folder here, okay? For this course, I recommend that y'all have, similar to CS1110, have some kind of folder for our, our course. Um, you can quickly actually make that folder by doing mkdir for make directory, and then you can call it like, I guess, like iOS course. So I'm gonna create a directory called iOS course in my home directory, okay? So I've created that directory, but how do I go inside of that? Well, you can use this command called cd to change your directory and then specify the folder. So I created a folder called iOS course. So I'll put in iOS course and then you can hit tab to kind of autofill, all right? So now I'm inside of this iOS course, course folder. Now, I want to clone the repository. So to clone the repository, you just type git space clone space the SSH um, URL. All right, and then hit enter. And then it reclones that repository. Um, 
I guess you check to see if y'all configure your SSH keys correctly. If y'all can, y'all can probably just like look me up on the um, GitHub and look for my Git tutorial. If you can clone this, then that means you've set up your SSH key successfully onto your Cornell Enterprise. If not, then um, something went wrong when you set it up. So um, that's a good way to check to see if y'all um, set it up correctly. All right, any questions? Okay. So now I've cloned a repository and I've cloned it inside of this iOS course folder. So if I type ls, it should say git tutorial. Now inside of that repos inside of this, I guess, repository, let's go inside of that. So cd git tutorial. Okay. Now let's do ls to see what's inside. So there's a readme file. So for, I guess, this demo, we're going to make changes to the readme file. But then again, on your assignments, there will be um, actual Xcode files that you will be writing in. So I'm going to open this readme file. If you have VS Code, you can do code um, readme.md to open it in VS Code. But then again, um, we won't be using VS Code in this class. It will just be the uh, Xcode. OK. So let me just make a change, right? I'll, I'll just add my net ID to this readme. So I'm just going to add VDB23. I'm going to save that. So now I'm going to try to push this into the, um, into the repository. So there are three things that you want to keep in mind whenever using Git for this course. So the first thing is that you want to stage your changes. Right? So you want to tell Git what files you want to push to the remote repository. So to do that, I can do git add, and then I want to specify which changes I want to add, which files I, I've changed so that I can push it to the remote repository. Well, if you do dot, it basically selects all um, files in this, uh, in this directory. So I do git add dot. So now all of the files that I've changed inside of this repository are now staged. Okay, so now after staging, you want to commit, right? So a commit is basically a snapshot of the current state of your, um, your code. So to make a commit, you can do git commit dash m for a message, and then you want to provide quotes inside of a, of a double quote, and then you want to put in a, a message. So I'm going to just say added uh, Vin's net ID. Click enter. So now I added that net ID. Um, OK, so before I move on, are there any questions? OK. So one command that you can also do is get status. That basically tells you, um, usually you want to do this before you add, though, to see like what changes you have on your uh, repository. <laughs> you have a question? Oh, yeah. So the code command only works if you have VS Code. But for the assignments, we won't be using VS Code. Um, that's only just for me to like kind of edit this file. All right, so I'm just basically editing some markdown file. That way, I can show you how to like push stuff to the GitHub. So don't worry about this VS Code stuff. Does that make sense? OK. Um, so now I've staged my stuff with git add dot. I've created a commit message, right? That's basically a snapshot of your code. Now what I want to do is push this to the remote repository. That way, Richie or other collaborators can be able to pull this in. So to do that, you can just do git push. <coughs> so now I do git push. And OK, so it's successful. So now if I go back to the repository on GitHub, if I refresh, I can see that this readme file has this commit message, and my name is right here, my ID. Does that make sense? OK, so now Richie's going to share his screen and show y'all what will happen if he doesn't pull before um, making changes to the code. Yeah, so all right, let's Let uh, share this. Also, could you add me to the PowerPoint? Oh, yeah. So I think I need to add a contributor. 
Yeah, so for in, in order for Richie to kind of work on this repository, you need to add him as a collaborator. Um, so as you can see, like, oh, this is <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, like my version of sort of the repository that um, Vin, for Vin had, but the um, README file does not have his recent edit on it. So let's say I tried adding my own net ID. So let's put it here. Let's save. Um, <coughs> let's drag this here. So I'm already seeded into the Git tutorial. So let's Git status first. So Git status sort of tells you which files are modified. So I only modified the README file there. So that's. Um, and red indicates that you have not staged that commit yet. So, uh, so let's first stage it, so git add. And the dot symbolizes that we add everything that we just modified. So now if you do git status again, it should give you the green. So the green is good, meaning that you've staged your commit, now you are ready to make the commit. So let's do git commit, dash 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 m, added. All right, so we have our commit, and let's try to push it. Let's see if there's an issue with that. Oh no, all right, so clearly we have an issue here because the remote contains that we have not, um, you know, we have not pulled before, so it even tells you you need to get pulled before pushing again. So if, if we're not allowed to sort of push our changes to the repository, unless we have the most recent version of the repository that's of the branch we're trying to push to. So before we can actually um, commit our changes, we need to get pull first. And now you can see that there is an issue with that because you have your own changes now and you also are trying to pull the changes from the repository. It's going to sort of cause conflicts in your local file on whether to keep your own changes or to modify the changes from the repository you're pulling from. So this is not something you're going to need to know, but um, just so I can demonstrate, rebase. So if I sort of do that, do that, it'll sort of have this mess like this that sort of shows you what is in the repository right now and what I have on my local branch. So this is relatively simple because there's only two lines that we wrote here, but imagine having this for like, you know, like a 200 line code file or even more than that. That's really annoying to go back and like change each one of these so that um, you know you modify them and get the right version of the code. You have to like go back to go back and like consult Vin and ask him which part is the correct version. So it's really annoying to go back and sort of solve these merge conflicts. So the best way to actually solve merge conflicts is to prevent them at all costs. Because you know there's no real good way to sort of address them besides going back like, with your partner and sort of checking which version is the correct version. So in order to prevent that. Always make sure to pull before you push to the repository. Otherwise, you're going to have merge conflicts like this. But you can solve them. So let's say we wanted to um, have my net ID and Vin's net ID. So we would just sort of incorporate both of them here. And I think now, if we check its status, there's going to be another modified file. And if we stage and commit again, we fix merge conflict. Now if we get push, oh, and if you don't configure it, so it'll tell you to sort of copy this sometimes. And then you sort of just copy it. And then the name of the branch that you always want to pull push to in this class is main. So this might may or may not happen. It really depends on if you configured your GitHub correctly. You don't really need to configure it. But if you want to sort of save the step of specifying where you want to push to, I would configure it. And we're going to have like a sort of a tutorial on the website that helps you do that. But for now, if you sort of face this issue, just copy the beginning part here that um, the terminal gives you, and then just sort of specify the branch that you want to push to. In this case, it's main. So if we do that, now we've pushed our changes, and we should be all good to go. So I guess this is a reason why we always want to pull before we push to our repositories. Otherwise, it creates conflicts in the code that are, can just be a headache to solve. So it's always better to sort of prevent them from even happening in the first place. Yeah, so I'll show you all, I guess, how to pull first. So um, by the way, personally, I use GitHub Desktop because I'm not, I don't know, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not a coder. <laughs> so I don't like using uh, the com uh, command line. So I use the GUI version. Uh, I highly recommend that if you're, you know, 
lazy like me. But um, so basically, to pull, so remember, Richie made changes to it. So if I wanted to pull, I could do a git pull. Or you can click on this um, refresh, or this, that, see, there's, there's a pull button right there. So this is why you should get GitHub Desktop. But otherwise, you can just type in git pull. And it'll pull basically every change that Richie has made. So moral of the story, if you plan on working with um, a partner, make sure you pull before making changes. All right, got it? OK. Um, I guess the main reason why we have to do pull and stuff, this is kind of different from how it works in industry. In industry, you usually have multiple branches. And so remember how we had that timeline with that you know, multiple branches? So the main branch is basically the main source code. And then if Richie wants to work on a feature, he creates a new branch off of that. And then I could create a, my own branch off of that. And so because they're separate branches, I can push whatever change I want onto our separate branches. And then we can merge those branches together onto main. But because for this course, we won't be dealing with branches, then we do need y'all to pull before you push because you are working with a single branch. All right. So I basically pulled everything already. So now, as you can see, Richie's ID is now inside of here. So um, if I didn't pull, then it would just have my net ID. If I were to make changes, then I, if I try to push it, it's going to say, oh, you have a conflict. All right? So make sure you pull before working. All right. Um, with that being said, so for your assignments, just remember the big three, right? First, want to stage your files. You're basically telling Git which files you want to select to be pushed to the remote repository. After you stage your files, you want to create a snapshot by using git commits dash m to provide um, a message, a commit message. So you're basically going to say what you added. Um, after you committed, then all you have to do is just push it, and you should be good to go. And remember, pull before making changes. All right, um, before we move on, are there any questions about Git, GitHub? Yes? Yeah, so cloning is when that's how you get a copy of the remote repository onto your local device. Pulling pulls or pulling, you already have that repository stored locally. You're just pulling changes from it. Whereas cloning basically clones the entire thing. Does that make sense? So most of the time you'll actually be pulling. The only one time you'll actually be cloning is when you first start an assignment and you clone the repository. You only usually just clone once for each assignment because um, you already have the um, repository on your local device. So most of the time you'll actually be pulling. So I guess that's the difference is one, you always, uh, most of the time you'll be pulling rather than um, cloning since you already have the um, repository the first time you clone. Yeah, so I'll just go over the the course website and how the assignments will kind of work. So after Wednesday's lecture next week, we will teach all, you know, in that lecture, we'll teach all basic Swift. We're going to release the assignment that night. Uh, technically, it's already released, but I just got to create the repository for y'all. So make sure y'all fill out the course roster. So basically, this is basically um, what the assignment handout looks like. Very, very similar to CS1110. Um, you can see the grading rubric. And then to get started, I did kind of write a brief summary about Git and GitHub. But for every assignment, there's going to be this command that you can put. You basically want to replace net ID with your net ID. So we're going to go in to the enterprise GitHub and create repositories for y'all. So it's going to have your net ID dash the assignment number. So for A1, it's going to be git clone, blah, 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 net, your net ID dash A1. So you can just copy it clone to your repository, and then you know stage, commit, and push changes. Um, so like throughout the code, you know, like after the end of a task, I remind y'all to you know, remember it. Git add, commit, and then git push. All right, are there any questions about the assignment handout at all? OK. Um, if there are any questions, there are a couple of to-dos. 
So then again, um, please make sure y'all read the syllabus as well as the grading section on the course website. Again, the course website contains every information that you need. So, you know, please read that. Um, office hours though, we did, we were able to get rooms. Um, I know on the website, they don't have the office hour schedules out yet, but I think probably end of day tomorrow, maybe, um, we'll release the office hours. Um, yeah, fill out the course roster so that way we can add y'all to the CMS as well as the GitHub. And, you know, if you haven't installed Xcode yet, you can install that. The pin ed discussion should contain everything you need to do. All right, any questions? Yes. Yes, so how it works is that you're basically pushing all of your changes or the changes that you stage <laughs> to the remote repository. So those changes are already made locally. So you push that onto the remote repository. Now remember, when Richie made changes on his local device, he pushed it to mine or he pushed it to the remote branch. But what I had to do was remember, pull it first. That way my local code base gets updated with the remote changes. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yeah, um, I think you could link it. I think uh, you go to here, go to settings. Yeah, you can link your GitHub Enterprise with that as well. Um, but usually how I use GitHub Desktop, the main reason why I use it is because you can see like all the changes that you made um, but I usually use a ter command line to make um, commits and then get add dot and stuff. But GitHub Dev Desktop just <coughs> makes your life a lot easier and it helps when you have like merge conflicts. Um, again, you don't have to use this. That's just my personal preference. But yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay, yeah, if there aren't any questions, then y'all are free to leave. If you need help setting up Xcode, then you know, come to us and we can help y'all.